Hello there. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Kate. I'm on a gap year and I'm going to Harvard next year and that's all you need to know about me because that's my entire personality. Anyways, today I am doing my long-awaited video, my video I hope can help out as many people as possible. It's gonna be long. It's gonna have a lot of information. Um, but I want to just share everything I learned during this past year. Let's get started. I want to kind of divide this video into three parts. Okay, before senior year, one thing you really, really want to focus on is something that is often referred to as a spike, but I hate that word. Because when I was going to apply, to college, I read online again and again about this thing that people call a spike. That you should, that being well rounded now, that that's bad. That you need to have this one specific area or little thing that sets you apart from everybody else. Like you need to achieve in this one area to an extent that is almost like inhuman. So it really discouraged me when I was applying to college because I thought, hey, I don't have a spike. I didn't win a national competition. So I thought that my chances of getting into these schools were significantly lower, but that's because I didn't understand what a spike actually is. But how I like to define a spike is more about your passion and that it's showing the college that you pursued your passion. And it doesn't have to be one passion, it can be multiple different areas that you were interested in. Like I have a friend who is both very interested in biology and science, but also she loves poetry and so and writing. So she has pursued both of them, but she showed that she has a significant amount of devotion to both and that she absolutely loves them. This doesn't mean, a spike doesn't mean that you have to go out and apply to a bunch of contests and win everyone. Not at all. What it does mean is highlighting what is unique about you. So right now, if you're a sophomore or a junior in high school, sit back, or even a senior, sit back and think, what of all the things I do gives me the most fulfillment, makes me feel like I'm making the biggest impact, and makes me the happiest? Once you have defined that, that's what you want to focus on, and that becomes your spike. It doesn't mean that you have to achieve great things in that. It just means that you want to devote energy to what you're most interested in. And for me, that was social studies, which is really broad, but that's okay. And so I went in many different directions. I love history, I love politics, I love economics, and I pursued all of those in their own way, but I was still so passionate about each and every one of them that the entire subject became my spike. Part of making something of yourself and part of doing something in high school is starting something or creating something out of nothing and i mean it doesn't have to be big a national nonprofit or anything it can be something small you can start a club at school or something like that also um, one thing i really want to focus on and emphasize is seeking leadership so instead of just being part of a club that you're interested in try and become a leader in that club that you are so passionate about um, or be, be a chapter leader start a chapter of a nonprofit that you really uh, align with um, or if something doesn't exist yet that you're really passionate about, you can start one in it, internships or jobs if you need to help support your family. Um, my advice for this is cold email literally everyone you can. Um, it might take 20, it might take 30, but probably someone will eventually reply. Same goes as if you're really passionate about journalism and you really want to get published pitch to as many people as you can and eventually one of them will say yes. Don't forget about your classwork as well. It's no secret that you have to be a good student to get into these schools. I mean, you don't have to be the level of an absolute genius at all, like come on. Um, <laughs> but make sure that you're taking hard classwork, but also what's so important is making sure you have balance in your life. Harvard doesn't care and doesn't really see a difference between taking like seven AP classes and 13 AP classes. Both courses, courseworks are so difficult. Um, and so maybe sometimes giving up an AP class so that you can sleep or that you can work more on your passion is okay. It's totally okay, no matter what some people at your school might tell you. It's 
so much better than just slaving away at something you might not be interested in. Also, next thing, standardized tests. We love them, we hate them. They are the worst. Uh, ACT, SAT, I really recommend taking them early. I took mine sophomore year, so that way I could focus on so many other things junior and senior year instead of, then, um, instead of just worrying about my score on the ACT or SAT. Also, you don't have to get a 36 or a 1600. Like, for goodness sakes, like, first of all, these tests are made for one specific type of student. And I know so many people who got 30s and still got into these schools because they were able to show that they had passion and that they had drive in other ways. Also, uh, SAT subject tests exist and they kind of matter, like you should take two of them. Take them in subjects that you're passionate about and you'll probably do fine. It's not really a big part of your application. Also, one thing I kind of want to emphasize is that Harvard and other schools, they want to accept people, not robots with no personality. So be a person. What do I mean by that? I mean, go to football games. Okay, that was such a basic American answer. Um, I mean, hang out with friends. I mean, pursue passions that other people might call surface level. For example, I really like to sew and I think fashion's really fun. So I took some sewing classes during high school and when it came, when it came time to write some of my supplemental essays on my application, I talked about how I wanted to, I would love to teach a class about the intersection of fashion and activism throughout history. And I was able to show that there were other parts of my personality that I just did for fun. Do things that make you happy, even if they don't necessarily fit under the predetermined notion of what is prestigious or what is academic or what is a good extracurricular. They want a multi-dimensional class. So don't be worried if you are sitting there trying to write your application, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so boring. Because number one, you're not. Okay, senior year, next section. Um, let's talk about the essay because the essay is one of those mystical things in the world of college applications. You hear stories about people who wrote a funny essay about their love for like KFC or you see people who write or you hear stories about people who write like a two word essay and they got in and you're like, wow, how am I ever going to be able to do that? Because these people are obviously more creative than I am. My life seems pretty boring. That's what I thought at least. Um, the whole thing is you have to just show why you're passionate. And whether that comes from somebody else in your life, whether it comes from a story during your childhood, show why you do what you do and why you want to continue doing it and why you want to make a difference in the world. First thing, an essay has to show your personality. And that probably means that you're going to have to write it with a stream of consciousness at first. That's what I did with my essays. I had like four or five ideas in my head and I just sat down on my computer. I wrote like 400 words out for each of them, just what immediately came to my head. And then I used those ideas to package together a well-formulated essay. Have five people edit your essay. That's incredibly important, I think. At least five people. While I think it's so important to tell your story and telling your story includes every single aspect of your identity including the hardships you went through, making a singular hardship the sole focus of your essay often can do more harm than good. And if you don't tell why you grew from it and how that inspired your passion today, then telling that story in an essay can be rather pointless. Anecdotes are your best friend. Anecdotes is what keeps the admission officer reading past the first two lines of your essay. And I thought about the first, one of the first times I truly felt like the history around me and that was on Concord or Old North Bridge in Concord, Massachusetts, I believe. Um, and I could just feel, I was like, wow, like so much history happened here. Well, I was eight and I was just weird, but like it was so cool to me. So that's how I started my essay. So th also think about what, what you've done that you're the most proud of. And then you want to talk about that in some of your supplemental essays. It doesn't have to be what is technically the most impressive. Think about which, which of your extracurriculars has had a lasting difference and impacted your community. Also, don't be afraid to be political if that's your thing. I mean, I'm a politics person, but you want to come off as a gracious advocate for a cause. Don't just be angry. 
show that you were inspired by other people that you are that you're doing this kind of work because you're passionate about it and not because you want to get recognition but one of the biggest advices i have for your college application is find people um, who have been in similar situations as you and that have done what you want to do and email them and ask them for advice because people want to give you advice they want to help other people who grew up like them who look like them hello it's an hour later and i just had about consecutive six mental breakdowns because my camera basically broke no it didn't break what happened is i accidentally clicked the wrong button in the settings when trying to figure out how to change my file format and instead i ruined it all uh, <laughs> so now um i'm back and better than ever uh, after my you know six mental breakdowns my freaking out we're not doing well but i am going to finish this video <laughs> Let's talk about your supplemental essay. So the thing I wanna say, look at the prompts, figure out which one you identify most with and then brainstorm just like you do with your normal essay. Don't worry too hard about being unique because if you worry about unique, then you're not unique and then it comes off as not being genuine. So for my supplemental essay, I just decided to follow the prompt I identified most with. So I talked about my gap year and I include this fun anecdote about a time I failed at Chinese brush calligraphy and that rounded it all out. Okay, next thing, interview. Make your application, probably won't break it. Um, if you really focus on your personality in a lot of your essays, that's where the interview can really help, especially if you identify with your interviewer, but it will almost never ruin your application, so don't worry too much about it. Um, just show your demonstrated interest in the school by coming up with very specific questions about Harvard or whatever school you're applying to. Um, do a little bit of research and that will impress the interviewer like so, so, so much. Next thing, the rest of your application. Use the spaces where you can put in extra information to talk about other extracurriculars you couldn't fit in the 10 that Common App lets you. Explain why you do some of the things you do, um, any extenuating circumstances you have had throughout high school that kind of explain maybe grades or something else. Um, and also one thing that I did a lot of is plans for my extracurriculars in the future. Let's go into the myth portion of the video because I want to film this all right now okay <laughs> number one myth you need to have a 4.0 and 36 on the act so false i don't have a 4.0 and 36 on the act granted i was decently close to that but i know people who had nowhere near that because while yes you need to be a good student being a good student and being an inquisitive thinker doesn't mean you're gonna have a 36 on the act don't spend all your time thinking oh my gosh i need to get one point higher on the act or else i won't get into harvard that's gonna make my application ah it's not going to do anything of the sort next myth you need to have won a world competition kind of already talked about this but no you just need to be passionate about something and show that you are passionate and that you pursued that passion does not mean you have to have won something big next one you have to know important people or be a legacy student. This one's kind of complicated because while yes, oh my goodness, the way our college system is set up is so whack, but yes, if you're a legacy student or if you know important people, it'll help you. That's no secret, but it doesn't mean that you have to have that in order to get in. Plenty of people, people get in that are from backgrounds where they don't have access to that. Okay, next one. It's impossible for, for the myth is it's impossible for people from regular high schools to get in to these schools. Very false. They want a ge geographically diverse class. They want kids from schools that aren't as good, kids from private schools. I mean, yes, if you're a kid from a private school, you probably have a greater likelihood of getting in because that's once again, that's the way the system works. But that doesn't mean that you don't have a chance because you do have a chance and everyone has a chance who does apply and it's so bad to think that you don't have a chance. Next one, you need to be, do, be in a bunch of clubs or do like a charity trip. Please don't do either of those for the sole purpose of getting into one of these schools because that comes off as most basic, not genuine, privileged freaking thing ever. Um, join clubs you're passionate about and put all of your energy in them and if you're gonna do a charity trip make sure it's an ethical one because let me let me tell you there are so many out there that are not ethical at all that are just exploiting the local communities that do more harm than good that like perpetuate really bad stereotypes please oh my goodness don't use that to write your essay so um my name is kate i've grown up a really like blessed life and i when i was after my junior year of high school i went on a trip to uganda to go build an orphanage and um i just saw how happy the people were there and 
it completely changed my life forever because I realized that you don't need money to be happy because I saw them and they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing. And I realized just how much I did have and it completely changed my outlook on life. Like, don't do that. So college applications now, they are such a business and it's honestly really sad to see just how many, how much money that some kids spend to get into the school of their dreams without any guarantee that they'll actually get in. Um, so trust me, it's not reflective of you if you don't get into these schools, although you probably have a much better chance now that you've, you know, watched my video and stuff. It's not reflective of you, it's reflective of a horrible business that is favoring those that come from very privileged backgrounds and um, that have parents that have been paying thousands of dollars and curating applications to these schools for years um, although yes a lot of there's a lot of resources out there now for first generation low-income minority students uh, it's I mean it's nowhere near the entire business of it so really don't take it personally trust me you're gonna be amazing no matter where you end up because college in the long run is four years of your hopefully very long life. So I, I really hope this video helped down, help break down that kind of barrier for some of you guys that you would normally get with in-college counseling but don't have the money for it because I definitely didn't. I reached out to people who knew things and they gave it to me for free, gave me that advice for free. So um, also if you really need some money for college and you're looking for some of those resources, check out my scholarship video. I'll link it somewhere um, and subscribe. I feel kind of inauthentic asking you to subscribe now, but like actually subscribe. Always feel free to reach out to me on Insta. Okay, bye.